Epitalon happens to be one of the most promising longevity peptides in existence for the simple reason that it's affordable, it's long lasting, and there is good evidence that it does work. So it's four amino acids long, so it can be classified as a bar regulator. It stimulates the uh, pineal gland, so that can help with uh, melatonin production, but also it's been uh, known to increase telomerase, uh, you know, the activity of that, so lengthening telomere length. This has been shown in vitro, and there's been lots of anecdotal reports and also some small studies, but there's also been some uh, talk of it not activating a telomerase as well. At least in the real world, that is not lengthening telomere length, and that gets me on to the subject of talking about in vitro. I'm going to be doing a podcast at uh, Brunel University with a researcher called Terry Roberts, who's done a study on epitalon, you know, like one of the first ones in ages, looking at uh, its uh, effect on telomere length. Studies suggest that epitalon can upregulate longevity genes like the one associated with oxidative stress, which is P66SHC. Also, you've got uh, the longevity gene uh, FOXO3. And on that subject, my, my longevity genes, the ones that are associated with optimal longevity is having GGLLs. And in my case, I've only got one GLL out of those uh, two base pairs. So one out of four instances, are, I'm not optimal. And so, yeah, doing anything I can to upregulate FOXO3 is ideal. That, that gene also it, it helps with uh, regulating autophagy. Another interesting thing that helps uh, with FOXO3 upregulation is green tea. Also, heat shock proteins are associated with FOXO3 expression. So the sauna, exercise, fasting, these are all things I do, no-brainer stuff. And so in um, rodent models, I believe it's around 25 to 30% um, life extension by using epitalon in uh, like long-term use of it. And there have been some human trials with it, though they are very small in Russia, but they show promising results lowering uh, all-cause mortality in cardiovascular and uh, respiratory disease patients. Epitalon is also thought to improve uh, DNA repair mechanisms, so reducing the risk of mutations. And this is something I'm going to be talking with the researcher from Brunel about. Uh, he even looked at uh, epitalon's effect on cancer cells. So what are my own results using epitalon? Well, my pace of aging has gone from 0.79 down to 0.76. And my telomere length has gone from 7.18 kilobases to 7.25. So in terms of the percentile, previously my telomere length, I was in the 16th percentile, and now I'm almost at the 34th. So that's a big jump in telomere length. It was a quite a big gap. I don't normally wait that long for testing, but the previous test I did, I uh, didn't. The, there was an error with my results. I didn't provide enough blood with it. And out of those two numbers, I always follow the Danundin pace more than the telomere length. The telomere length is a good indication you're under a lot of oxidative stress. If it just suddenly gets shorter out of nowhere, then that's a bad sign. But uh, some people naturally have shorter telomere lengths anyway, so it's not nothing to worry about. It's so when you get really low into that fifth percentile, then that's uh, associated with cancer. And in terms of health outcomes, telomere length is only estimated to be about 2.8% of uh, health outcomes that it represents, whereas the Danunin pace is estimated to overlap with about 60% of health outcomes. I mean, it does monitor 19 different biomarkers. And when you look at the facial aging of people, it's a very well-trained clock, you know, 45 year olds, the ones in the middle, the average ages look 45 and the ones, the, the younger end of the spectrum, look 10 years younger and the, the ones aging faster look 10 years older which very much represents society when you see people the same age the ones that do and don't take care of themselves it can be like a couple of decades apart and how they look check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different bar markers and get your future vitality optimized there's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change and back on that subject of telomere length they did suddenly get shorter out of nowhere in March 2024, I was really burning myself into the ground, not getting a lot of sleep. My sleep score was the lowest I've ever been, around 62%. And so, yeah, the t even doing epitalon, I think a few months before that, it doesn't necessarily, if you're working yourself into the ground, then uh, yeah, it might extend telomere length, but uh, may only mildly, in my opinion, it's not that if you're doing a lot of negative things, it's not gonna cancel that out. I know there are other drugs in the pipeline that uh, can, increased telomere arrays, so I'm gonna keep an eye on that research. So being at 6.75 kilobases, that put me in the bottom fifth percentile, and yeah, it's still relevant. When you get short out of nowhere, it's not a good sign. You need to think about what's happening with your lifestyle, and now 
with my uh, sleep scores, they, they are starting to pick up again. I did Epitalon right at the start of January and then it did jump up a bit. It started to trail off. And then when you look at my previous cycle over the last six months, there appears to be a trend doing Epitalon every three months. I see an increase in my restorative sleep and then it just trails off and then I do another cycle. So doing it in January, you can see it go up again. And that's why I favor doing it every three months. In this particular cycle, I experimented with rather than doing it one milligram daily for 20 days. I just tried doing one milligram for just 10 days to see the difference. And it has helped, but uh, I've noticed my sleep is trailing off the quicker in my sleep scores. So with my next cycle, I'm gonna switch back to doing it 20 days and just keep a monitor on my sleep, as well as things like dreams. I noticed my dreams get a lot more vivid on it. So Epitalon is definitely my top five longevity drugs. There are other things too, and I do see some great responses from people that do it with both their pace of aging and increasing telomere length. So I've been using Swiss Chems for over a couple of years now, very reasonably priced. I'm happy with their products. I actually did do testing on this Epitalon, and it came back as 85% pure. And this, like, that's kind of like on the borderline of what I'd really accept. I did think about it because the peptide itself is manufactured in China, sent to America, comes to me in the UK, and then I sent it back to America for testing. And it had been with me for around seven months, and there would probably been some temperature changes in between that. So yeah, it does make sense there could have been some degradation. Well, yes, the peptide itself, you can expect some mannitol to be included with it to preserve the peptide, but yeah, that should only account for a few percent. So in future, if I do any more testing with Swiss Chems, what I'll do is have it directly sent from Swiss Chems in America to the testing there as well. So if you've done Epital on yourself, then please do comment down below. I'm always interested to hear your feedback with it, especially with this one, because the doses do vary. People get very different responses with it. If you like that video, then check out this one on my stack with Methylene Blue for the ultimate focus. Thanks for watching. See you next time.